That was President Trump tonight at the White House Halloween celebration. Multiple reports tonight say the president is fuming over today's developments in the Mueller investigation. One senior Republican told The Washington Post, the walls are closing in. Everyone is freaking out. The Post reports, Trump's anger Monday was visible to those who interacted with him, and the mood in the corridors of the White House was one of wariness and fear of the unknown. Trump is also increasingly agitated by the expansion of Mueller's probe into financial issues beyond the 2016 campaign and about the potential to him and his family. Joining us now, Ron Klain, former Chief of Staff to Vice Presidents Joe Biden and Al Gore, and Attorney General Janet Reno, also with us Steve Schmidt, Republican strategist and an MSNBC <clears throat> political analyst. Uh, Ron, your reading of the three indictments that we discovered today, three with one guilty plea already. Yeah, I mean, it's a day that we will remember for a long time. I don't think it's the moment of truth, but it is finally a moment of truth. Uh, we found now for, know for sure that the Russians had the emails. They knew about this months before it became public. They tried to traffic those to the Trump campaign, to Mr. Papandopoulos. And if they did that, we know what they were doing in Trump Tower two months later. And uh, clearly, there's now no question about the fact that there was a concerted Russian effort to influence the campaign through the Trump campaign. Campaign directly, one conviction so far, and probably more to follow. Uh, the, I just want to read more reports of what we have today from the uh, what's going on in the White House. Uh, throughout the day, the president spoke to his attorneys multiple times in response to press inquiries and questions about the process, but never revealed any anger, uh, any angst or anger. This is according to Ty Cobb, uh, the president's lawyer in the White House in response to this. He says the president was focused on diplomatic preparations ahead of his trip to Asia. He wanted the country to understand he's fully committed to continuing his course with the special, uh, with the special counsel, which is one of full cooperation. Steve Schmidt, so Ty Cobb uh, trying to strike the note of full cooperation. He is indeed, but at the end of the day, here's the central fact today, is that Paul Manafort indicted and charged, amongst other things, for conspiracy against the United States, was one of the participants in a meeting in a room with Donald Trump Jr., with the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, with officials and unofficial representatives of the Russian government, who were there to deliver negative information, dirt, about the Democratic nominee to the Republican nominee's campaign. So today, this took a giant leap closer to the White House, and I think it bears mentioning something that we've never really seen before, uh, the intensity of the public misinformation campaign uh, that's deliberate, that's premeditated, uh, that's coming from the podium of the White House, from the press secretary, and is being echoed uh, across the conservative media complex, including in the editorials of some of this nation's uh, historically leading newspapers and, of course, across the uh, conservative television media networks as well. Uh, Steve, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I, uh, I don't show clips from the White House briefing. I was I considered a bunch of them to show here tonight. Uh, but it is just propagandistic lies. It is, it, is a, it is a waste of whatever number of seconds I put those up on the screen. Uh, and Ron Klain, we, we've never reached that point in our coverage before where what's coming out of the White House press briefing room is, is arguably a disservice to present. Yeah, I mean, oddly enough, it makes you nostalgic for Richard Nixon, because at least he never sent Ron Ziegler out to say that it was George McGovern's fault that Watergate <laughs> right. had happened, or that George McGovern was trying to pay off the plumbers. I mean, that's what this is. And what's crazy about it, Lawrence, is it's obviously untrue. It's obviously despicable. And craziest of all, it's not really a defense. No matter what Hillary Clinton did, and she didn't do anything they've said, it doesn't lessen Donald Trump's guilt and his campaign's guilt for the things that happened. So it's a complete Completely false, completely despicable, and completely irrelevant defense of the Trump campaign. Steve, I, I know we've covered this kind of ground before, but I, I just want you, as a campaign professional, uh, on the, especially campaign professional on the Republican side, to talk about 
how what how extraordinary this material is when you read it in the, in this indictment and these statements of evidence in the guilty plea about what these people were up to inside this campaign what Papadopoulos was up to inside the campaign uh, the Trump campaign and the Trump world has tried to present all these interactions as perfectly normal kinds of things that happen in every campaign I've worked at the highest level, Lawrence, of two campaigns for president. Uh, we won one. Uh, we lost one. Uh, I have many good friends, Ron included amongst them, uh, who've worked on Democratic campaigns. Uh, there is no person I know on either Republican campaigns or Democratic campaigns, had they gotten a call, an approach from an official of the Russian intelligence services or the Russian government who offered to give dirt on the opponent wouldn't have immediately, immediately reported it up the chain of command inside the campaign and gone immediately to the FBI. Uh, it is extraordinary the lack of understanding or the blindness from so many in the Republican Party as this issue has been covered over the year. This was never an attack on the Democratic Party. This is an attack uh, on our elections process. Thus, it's an attack on the United States of America by a foreign adversary. Uh, and the Republican response to this has been appalling. And the complicity and the echoing of the misinformation campaign and the type of misinformation that takes place in no healthy democracy anywhere in the world deserves to be commented on and it deserves to be recriminated. And, uh, and Ron, you've uh, worked in campaigns where you might be someone's campaign supervisor, which is the term used yeah. in one of the uh, evidence documents here uh, in the Papadopoulos case, uh, where that campaign supervisor says to Papadopoulos, great work, when the work that Papadopoulos is describing is, in fact, collusion with Russians. That's right. I mean, uh, you know, I agree. Gen I agree with what Steve said about every res any responsible campaign officer aid uh, reporting this up the chain. What happened here was the George Papadopoulos did report this up the chain, and Sam Clovis, one of those senior officials, told him he should go to Russia. Told him he should go meet with the Russians in Russia. So I mean, w the problem is the rot here goes all the way to the top, and how far up the top it goes beyond Paul Manafort, we're going to see. But uh, th this was a campaign that was in that was act actively working with and willing to seek out information from a foreign adversary of the United States. And as Steve said, that's just something that neither Democrats or Republicans should ever consider. Ron Klain, thank you for joining us. Steve, please stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.